real orchestra. Cinematic Studio Strings. Replacing the melody line by Abbey Road Orchestra first violins. And now melody played by Cine Strings. Hey everyone, Mark Giovanni here. Thanks for tuning in. So in this video, we're going to be comparing Spitfire Audio Abbey Road Orchestra first violins versus Cinematic Studio Strings and Cine Strings. Why are we doing this? Well, because last week I installed this library and I did like a first impressions video. It was like a one hour video. I promised that I would do a full review video. This is what we are doing. But to do a review, I think the best way is to compare with other libraries. And ultimately, what I would like to accomplish is for you, after watching this video series, if you're interested in this library, is for you to know if it's worth the price, yes or not. So what I'm going to be doing for you to be able to decide if it's worth the price for you, yes, no, is to, one, compare it with Cinematic Studio Strings and Cine Samples. And uh, I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing this based on transcribing music and comparing it to the original. So we're going to be transcribing variations <coughs> on an original, excuse me, on an original Original theme by Edward Ed 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 Elgar. I can do this. And uh, is this guy here? So this will help us assess how good each one of the libraries is, um, how good is it at, at writing like in a slow melody. Second, we're gonna go for like, like a faster, kind of like allegro type of legatos. In this case, we're gonna go with uh, Haydn Symphony 104, uh, first movement, which is this one here. We'll go for a second allegro melody, maybe this one with a few more articulation changes. This is a Beethoven sixth. First movement, it goes like this. Then we'll transition into film music and we're gonna go to John Powell. This is from The Born Ultimatum. Uh, the cue is called Waterloo and sounds like this. So this will give us a, a good representation of how good each one of them is at kind of like low register staccatos or stinatos. Then we're going to move to Chris Young. This is going to be Spider-Man 3. It's a hurricane from Speeder. This is the name of this cue. And it sounds like this. And I chose two of the staccatos, one for the low register and one for the high register, because there are some libraries that sound great in kind of like the uh, mid-low register, but when it goes to the high register, it starts, it starts sounding a little bit synthy. And finally, we end with John Williams. This is going to, for kind of like faster figures, uh, going from low to high register here, this is going to be for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows as uh, the Sky Battle, which sounds like this. Thank you. 
All right, so for a good comparison, I looked for examples in the classical repertoire, um, these three, um, that the violins, we're comparing violins, essentially, right? Because uh, it's a Cinematic Studio a CSS, Cinematic Studio Strings, which is like the full strings library. And then the same thing with Cine Strings. But for the Hyper Road Orchestra uh, violins first, we first violins, we have just the violins. And so we are comparing essentially the violins. We can compare the different articulations, but we're essentially comparing the violin. So the, 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 for the rest of the strings orchestra is gonna remain the same. We need for the violins to be exposed, to be able to hear them uh, clearly so we can compare the, differ the, the, the differences, all right? So I chose uh, examples in the classical repertoire and I transcribed uh, music here in the, because you cannot find the scores here, and um, in the film music repertoire, that I thought that we could uh, hear the violins, the violins or the high strings uh, clearly, so we can compare. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, again, by us, violins one part are the only ones being replaced. So I'm going to build. Uh, what I'm what I'm going to do is, I'm going to orchestrate, and then I'm going to replace the violin one. In this case, for example, cinematic studio strings. And I'm gonna replace it. See, this one here is uh, Abbey Road. All right. So I chosen both classic and cinematic examples. I match the room mix and pan position. There are some. There are some libraries that sound a little bit more wet. There are some libraries that sound sound a little bit closer. So I adjusted the mic so we get the kind of like same type of sound in terms of closeness. And also there are some libraries that sound a little bit more uh, heavily panned to the left. There are some that sound a little bit more center uh, center and ambient. So I matched the, the pan as well. All right. Finally. I will not be spending a lot of time perfecting the mockups. Why three reasons? The main one is this one, but the, fir the first one is, you know, you can make them sound 95% the same, no matter the library. These are, you know, three of them great libraries. And if you put the time, you can make them sound good, you know, end of a story, that's it. But I think one of the most important thing is playability and ease of use. These are really important factor. But this feel, still, for some examples, I worked out a polished version before recording the video, so you can compare versions if you were to put some more time into it, okay? A note for this particular example, when it, in regards of Cine strings in samples, I'm using the old contact version, this guy here, instead of the Musio version, just because to me, the, the contact version still gives me a little bit more flexibility. To cover all these examples, I'll divide this in four videos. We'll start today with the slow melody, and then we'll have a second video for the uh, two allegros, and then another one for the staccatos, and the fourth one for the fast figures. Then I'll be rating the different libraries from one to three, and then we'll gather the totals and see which one is uh, which one wins. But even though there are going to be a few tangible things that for sure, you know, this library is better, this library not, is not as, not, as, not as good. So many times it's going to be a matter of taste or what the music needs in this particular moment, okay? Meaning sometimes it's not which library is best, it's what the music requires, what, you know, what do I hear in my head, you know, and then what library I use to achieve that sound, okay? So sometimes it's going to be one specific library, a combination of libraries, etc. All right. So here we'll... Total this, and we're gonna have our winner. But on top of slow legato, slow legato, short notes, high and lows, and fast figures, we can also do a second pass with you know the concert, you know playability, out of the go south, other articulation price, and then we're gonna put it all together, and we're gonna have our winner. Again, these are gonna be a series of videos. I'll link them down below. Let's get it started. So let's start with this low melody. All right, so this is what we are trying to recreate. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And... Uh... All right, we get the idea. So when transcribing something, what we want to see is how good the library is, as, how good the library is as getting as close as possible to the real thing. And so a couple of things that I want to pay attention is these tenuto, these lines here below the notes, these tenutos, right? And then um, the, the dynamics. So let's take a listen to this. So 
So here's what I would say. The tenuto basically is like perform the entire length of the note in a way and also add a little bit of weight, but it's not like a marcato or a staccato, staccato will be shorter. So it's add weight to the note and make sure it's for the entire length of the note. But still, still, you see if we, we play, we'll I listen to this one more time. Um, phrasing always uh, or phrasing many times matter more most m matters more than each individual note so if you see here you've got tenutos here again right we're supposed to add weight to each one of these notes but yet the last one this one here has a little bit less weight because the phrase all the, the phrases generally they're gonna go up and down all right so like this See? See that? Type of thing. One more time. And then I'll play this back. So just just so we understand that it's uh these markings are important, but the phrasing is more important. And then especially here you'll see how exaggerated, even if we are in the piano range, and then here we go from piano to we don't know what exactly, and then back to pianissimo, right? How exaggerated this dynamic is and how important it is and makes the music feel alive. But then let's let's take a listen up until here and then we'll get to we'll get, uh to, to start writing. All right, here we go. And there's a little bit of a, of a rubato, so you just kind of like slow down the tempo here a little bit. Um, we will not emulate, we'll, we'll kind of do these things. But uh, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start by building these, uh, the background. And so for this, I'm going to use CSS, just long notes, something like this. All right, this guy here. Oops, there you go, here. So I'm going to start right here. This guy, let's go. One, one, two. All right, cool. Next, we're gonna go with the viola. So viola, if you are not, if you're not good at reading an auto clef, you know, I would take it one chord at a time, like this. I'm going to draw this one, and then I'm going to go in here, and so I'm gonna be recording one at a time, like this. So this, uh, the the middle line would be the C note, right? So there is going to be a B and a D, okay? And the next one is going to be a D and the C. So let's do this. And we stop here. The next notes here are a B flat a and then a G. So let's record this. So B, A, G. Let's go. So here. Ah, here we go. So. Right. And remember, this has to be a little bit softer because we have these. Uh, Dynamic going up and down and here pianissimo again. All right, cool. And then finally, we're going to have here it's a B and then E, both flats, B, E, so like this. And then we're going to have a G and a D. So, so let's go there.
I messed up here. These were, sorry. So. Great. Next, cellos. With the cellos, we can go with legatos because there's no double notes. By the way, these um, some these are you know double stops. These are DBCs. I should have done DBCs, but again, I'm doing these. Uh, these are double stops. So most of the this here's the the only time where we've got DBCs. So it would sound a little bit thinner here in real in real life. But for the rest of them, it it, it seems like they are double stops. So um, it will sound thicker. We can em emulate that. Uh, with uh, just playing two notes. Okay, so violoncello long, we're gonna go here, so G. We can, we can just gonna go ahead and, uh, and. When we've got semi short notes like this, I like to use like the one um, second recording like this. It adds, it's just because it has a better um, kind of like attack and release, and that you it's performing the note a little bit better than than you know taking a long note and doing the dynamic, the release, meh, right? So this is an actual note recording from beginning to end. So the performance of this note is a little bit more natural, realistic, more, let's, 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 just, uh, let's just do this, so. Ah! Whatever. All right, cool. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna quantize this a little bit. Yes, great. And there's one that's a little too loud, this one. For the rest of them, I think it works. Just me just quantize velocity just a tad. Uh, velocity, uh, yeah, velocity. And this one was a tad too loud, see? I do the same for the cellos and maybe for the viola as well, maybe. So, so. Yeah, so here we go and. Uh. this a little bit yes and finally we could even just copy paste i'm gonna copy viola long so i'm gonna copy and paste it down here paste and then whoops no paste now we're talking and now we're going to so i don't have to rewrite the entire thing i'm gonna bring them here quantize and they i know that they have to perform in the soft register velocity wise so here we go this doesn't matter anymore, so we don't need modulation and we don't need expression. Just a tad at the beginning to set. Let's see. Yeah. So that's it. We've got the 
the the bay or the foundation now we're gonna write the melody on top so we're gonna start with uh cinematic studio strings this is gonna be uh, the lungs sounds like this now i'm just gonna i'm not gonna get into details but cinematic studio strings which sounds beautiful and uh especially the legatos um for the legato to sound so natural and realistic, the engine or the sampler needs time to trigger that legato, which sometimes has a, has a duration of like, you know, 200 milliseconds. The transition between this note, then the, there's, there's, there's actually like 300 milliseconds in that case, or this faster one it's around 150 milliseconds right and there's a fast a faster one so um in order for them to be able to play these beautiful legatos it takes time that means that when you are playing you have to play a little bit ahead of the click and it is a little bit confusing sometimes takes time to you know to get used to it so there's a learning curve but it is what it is all right so you're gonna see me playing a little bit ahead of time so that's something to take into consideration with this particular library. All right, other than that, let's just uh, get rolling. So the notes are here, see? The keyboard is here. And I'm gonna be recording this here with retrospective recording, which means that you're not gonna see what I'm playing. And when, then when I'm done, I'll hit R, and then the, the MIDI data will show up there. So here we go, see if I can uh, get this right the first time. Let's see, uh, click. Nope, I did not. Can I do this right? Okay. Boom, all right, here we go. Let's see, let's take a listen to this. Generally, what uh, what I need to do is once I've done this, because I have played ahead of time and this particular track has 150 milliseconds of negative delay, as you see, uh, then sometimes I have to move this a little bit, but let's see, let's see. Yeah, yes. So this is a typical process that I do. So I'm gonna move it like this, just like, yeah. So I think we're gonna need a little bit. Let's make this bigger, get rid of this guy. So I have space to work. Just a little bit of tweaking this part of the game. Sometimes you can get it right the first time. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking. I think this is gonna start a little bit higher in expression and modulation. Maybe we can go down a tad. Here. No, not as much. I think higher. So we're gonna go down just a tad. So see, this takes a little bit of time. That's 
part of the game if you want to get a i'm not gonna spend a lot of time but if you want a you know as realistic as possible uh then here's where you're gonna spend a little bit of time ideally you're gonna get it right i could record the game but i, I wanted for you to see the, the the process if you don't get it right the first time because i don't want you to get frustrated um i could you know give it a go two three times maybe i, I get a, a perfect pass but if you don't right this is very typical so let's continue meaning doing all the tweaking This this works great. Let's let's make this a little bit bigger. These are the ones that I care about. Let's see the score. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I, I like this last note to be a little bit softer, but I think this one is a, just a tad too much. We're going to reach the peak here, and the same thing with expression. Something like this. Yes. I think... And the, the, the G note should be a little bit softer. See? Let's go a little bit, a little bit louder here, and then something like this. Let's see. Yeah, I think this one needs to be a little bit faster, so faster legato. Then it has to start a little bit later. No, maybe. Oops, too much. I think Yes, kind of thing. Yes, I think it works. All right. So, yeah. So, with no with no click it would sound like this oops here we go thank god Okay, cool, fantastic. All right, so these are uh, cinematic studio strings. Now let's go with um, Abbey Road Orchestra, first violins. So let's switch the bill. Let's go here. So I copied and pasted the same f uh, foundation, right? So this guy's here, this, this guy's here. And now I'm going to write the melody. Let's see. I am going to use the performance legato. And uh, let's get this started. See how it feels. Two and. Cool. So first, what I'll say it's it's much easier. It's much easier to play. Uh, so this is not a perfect take, but it's closer. It's closer to 
to the final thing. I'll, I'll tweak a few things, but it's pretty close. It's not perfect. There are many mistakes, and I, you know, I, I, I feel the urge of re-recording it again. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do it because as I was playing, I learned. Oh, this is how it reacts, and I just, I, it, it, it takes me a couple of days to adapt from the other library to this one. So I think the less talking, the better. Let's go. Yes, yes, I think I got it right. Uh, let's see, what's the negative delay on this one? Uh, minus 150, so I'll have to move it because I think I, I performed quite well to click, so I'll have to move it here, and boom, here we go. By the way, these guys should be here. Boom, there you go. All right, cool. We'll talk about this problem in a second. Uh, in fact, let's talk about this now. Okay, so in comparison, so this is Abbey Road now. Again, here. So that was uh, Abbey Road and then CSS. Abbey Road, CSS, all right, so that's this, my opinion, let me take some notes, let me just pause, okay, observations, <clears throat> so far, we still have to do cinematic as in strings, but so far, CSS, a little bit harder to play, for sure, especially first time, first time using it, especially if using advanced legatos, this thing here, legato, advanced legato, so standard, advanced. The the, uh, the standard one has basically two, two mm, it has a slow or medium and, the, and fast, right? Advanced has a slow, medium or fast, right? But also adds more delay or latency, so it's harder to perform, to play. This one, number one, two. In my opinion, in my opinion, a little bit more natural sounding legato. That's my opinion. So for my taste, I like in term, when when it comes to slow legatos, I like this one better. It requires some tweaking. A little. Bit, I found myself because it's harder to play. It requires a little bit more of tweaking. With practice, it will require less tweaking. But it's just a reality that it's a little bit hard to play. And then. Um, the, as, as you have seen, I take a note, the best way to, to rewrite dynamics is with the straight lines. This library, there are some libraries where the dynamics are going to be a little bit more organic, like for this, uh, for example, this one. So not perfect and I was using pedal, but see that the transition between notes are a little bit of a gap and that kind of like helps uh, to for it to feel more like a natural transition. And uh, see that it has a little bit of an arc, it's not exactly a straight line, see this would be a straight line, see, but it has a little bit of, a, of, of an arc here, right? So there are some libraries that respond better to this. Uh, I've, I've found that CSS in particular works so, so well with, believe it or not, more ro robotic, in my opinion, um, dynamics. So straight lines, up and down. You don't need to, you know, work 
organically so much okay so that's that and now when it comes to Abbey Road Orchestra I'll talk about this in a second but the dynamic layers transitions especially in the in the, in the kind of like the soft to mid dynamic register beautiful very smooth so I like this very much relatively easy to play in my opinion easier than cinematic studio strings and I found it to to be a little bit like slightly fuller and thicker sound than CSS it feels like a bigger section which hey you know I can thicken easily cinematic studio strings by bringing the violins too let's let's give this a try in fact so see uh, cinematic studio strings and then I be wrote. Let me maintain it at the same register. So, and now, so. Even though I have matched the room, it still feels um, a little bit fuller, like a bigger section type of sound for, in my opinion, for the uh, Abbey Road. But if I were to copy, see, this is CSS. If I copy and paste these two violins too along here, then, and I move these guys a little bit to all right and then these are a little bit more in thicker bigger sound something like uh, if we so with with without violence too so two just one so in comparison as long as because uh, as long as we maintain the same volume relative volume um, because uh, you know something with more something louder can trick our ear into sounding you know bigger thicker with more uh, uh, wider even but at the same volume, slightly fuller and thicker sound than CSS. But again, uh, the fact that CSS sounds a little bit smaller gives me an opportunity that if I want it to sound smaller, you know, I can have just one section. And if I want a thicker sound, then I can have like both, both sections. Okay? Like what I just showed you. So that's that. And finally, here, the legato... So this weird thing happens. So if we go, if we go here, towards the middle of it, uh, let's go here. Pay attention to pay attention to this note. Let's go here. So I've tested this, and here's the conclusion. The legatos, the legatos trigger a fast attack or a weird connection in between the legato a bit too early. When that's that's never happened except, you know, uh when uh, for the second note of the legato at the slide at kind of like faster tempos quarter note 70 and uh above modulation 50 and beyond so and this happens at the performance legato and the lyrical legato and the other legatos as well so for example what this means is if i'm go here and i do something like no problem right um if i if i do it faster still no problem as long as we are below 50 see but if we do the first one here and then we go beyond 50 in modulation and relatively fast then we're gonna have that weirdness see so i consider this to be in my opinion uh, a, a little small bug that will be fixed soon this is version 1.1 all right, cool. So let's go back here and now let's record Cine strings. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to copy this from here to here. Whoops. Uh, J. Boom. Boom. There you go. 
And now we are going to go down here, which is, uh, this is the scene strings. Now, scene strings, it's always going to sound a little bit brighter. It, it's a beautiful sound, but in comparison, it's a, it, it, in comparison, it'll feel a little bit harsher, okay? Uh, it, it comes very, very handy for some situations, but definitely it's brighter. All right, so let's go here. And let's make this a little bit smaller. There you go. Let's switch to this view. And let's bring this guy over here. Okay, so let's record this one more time. So, closer. And one, two, three, one. There you go. Okay, one more time. I think I can do better. All right, good. It got recorded down here. This is minus 80 milliseconds, so I guess I'm going to move this just so slightly like this. Okay, boom. Let's see. Let me, let me use one sec. So um, it is uh, definitely, it's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit harsher for sure. And th there's some transitions. It has a, a weird noise in between. I um, also we, we could try. Let's uh, let's just duplicate this just once and let's try Musio. It's the same samples, but the programming is different. I personally prefer this one because it gives me more flexibility. But this is Musio. There you go. So this violin is one legato by Brato Patch. Okay, let's uh, let's give it a try. See which one we like most. And there we go. Oops. Let's show the score. There you go. Now we're seeing the score and we're going to see the keyboard. Yeah, there you go. And. Oops. Okay. So, okay. okay. No, I can do better. Uh, the programming is a little bit different and it's, uh, it's taking me a little bit to get used to. I think I could do I could do a good job, but I think for now I'm more used to this one. See that each library is like a different instrument. It takes a little bit of uh, of uh, adapting. But anyway, let's compare the three. Give me let, let, let me give you the observations uh, regarding um, cine strings. A little bit harsher, brighter sound. Yes. Easy to play, the, the one for me, the one uh, in, in contact version, so the old version. Easy to play since there's just one type of transition, so it's easier, and it's a faster transition, so it's definitely easier to play. Uh, the, the I would say the playability of uh, the Abbey Road, it's uh, a little better. I like it a little better. Um, so there you go. So let's start, let's compare the three of them. Let's start with the, with the real thing. You see, this is an older recording, an older recording. So uh, it will also sound very different in terms of like with it, also the type of sound, a little bit uh, softer, less, you know, there's, there's less brightness. Uh, and definitely you can tell that, um, you know, it has some, you know, it has aged. But anyway, um, the melody to stand out.
All right, cool. So now, the uh, completely different sound now with uh, CSS. Uh, I would say the the performance it's way better than what I've been able to do. The musicality in each note, it's you know four hundred percent, a thousand percent better of uh, what I've been able to do here. And this is the most important part in my opinion. But in terms of sound, let's uh, let's compare the three of them. CSS, this guy here. So this is all CSS, including the melody. Here we go. Sorry, I apologize. The one that we just hear is an, a non-finished, non-polished one. Uh, not, not the one that we just recorded in this video, which is the first test that I did before the video. CSS, one more time. Now it's going to be a be wrote. Finally, this is going to be Cinematic Studio Strings. Uh, no, sorry, Cine Strings. Here we go. So these are this is the the final the scores that I give to each one of the the libraries. So Cinematic Studio Strings three, Abbey Road two, Cine Strings one. Now I gave Cinematic Studio Strings a three because to me it is important the the, the sound of the legato. In this case, we are measuring how good the slow legatos are, or or how you know how realistic the library sounds in a slow melody like this. And to me, it's very important to be able to recreate that. I like that very much. Uh, in terms of the dynamics, uh, in both, uh, lovely. Now, for if you value more playability, you know, then this would be the other way around. Okay, this would be something like this, or you know. You could be, it could be a tie. To me, again, it's very important uh, the, the the sound of that legato. You know, legatos. You know, generally for a slow notes type of thing, um, the it's it's easier for the library to perform good legatos. The faster you go, the harder it gets for it to be realistic. But at the same time, it is very hard to with samples to program them so it feels as alive and real as the real recording. Right, the dynamics, the way it's performed, is so, so much craft, right, and and um, and talent to be able to perform at that level. We are composers, but at the same time, we are also performers, and the way we perform, it, uh, it, uh, if we perform, if we are going to be able to make our music sound better and feel more alive and realistic, the better we are, are using our instrument, which is it is the sequencer with a computer. So, um. So, because this is the most important thing for me, a three goes here. A two for Abbey Road Orchestra with this asterisk because of the little back um, 
which makes it a little bit unplayable, but I'm sure they will solve it later on. And scene strings, even though you can make it work and sounds lovely to me at the moment, I prefer any of these two. All right, but this is just the beginning. This is not the only thing that we want to test. We've got so many other things that we have to test. I'm going to be doing more videos to compare. So far, we've done this low melody, but we've got to do, you know, kind of like faster, more allegro melodies. We'll do two of these. Then we're going to go for staccatos, low register, high register, and then fast figures. We're going to uh, be kind of like uh, transcribing Haydn, Beethoven, and then John Paul, Christopher Young, and John Williams. So stay tuned. I'm going to be linking the videos below this video when they are done. They're coming up. Thank you for watching. Have a great one. Thanks for staying tuned. If you found some value, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.